Well, hello and welcome, everybody. Hi, this is Rachel Vote, and this is A Good Girl's Guide to Podcast. We are kicking off. It is season three. We're kicking off season three. Uh, I would say, can you even believe it? But yes, absolutely, I can believe it. It has been officially a year since we wrapped season two. And um, we're back. We're back. So for a number of different reasons, uh, I just threw some reflection. I mean, here's what we're here, right? We're here because I am somebody who's in personal development. I'm somebody who very much aspires to do my best now after 2018, as we like to say. But uh, I'm just excited to be back in season three. So we'll we'll kind of get into how we got here, but let's just do our introductions because one of my commitments, 1000% is to really streamline that process about connection. So you're probably not new here if you're listening to season three, but if you are, thank you so much for being here and welcome. Uh, I'm going to send all of my love out to whoever it is that connected us in some way, shape, or form. Uh, it really means a lot to me to have your support in any capacity. That's and very important for me to very much reiterate throughout all of my clients or all potential people who I'm going to be talking to, working with, whatever, is that I don't know that all people really understand the level of support that you bring to the table in so many different capacities. You might not be able to buy from a person you love. You might not be able to like shop with them or use their services, like monetarily speaking. But when you tune in, when you turn on, when you share, when you comment, it makes a difference because if you cannot monetarily support a business, when you put your energy around telling other people about them or you connect with their message, you you just boost the algorithm on social media and in real life. So whatever your value that you perceive to be uh, as a part of my business, you better times that by tenfold. Okay, so if you're new, you're new. Uh, but if you're not, you're a veteran and hello and welcome. Uh, and there should be a link in the bio for you to connect with me, whether that's through personal development and one-to-one -one sessions or doing empowerment classes. If you're looking for a free opportunity to connect with me and get my time through uh, the consulting symbiotic relationship I have with Pure Romance as an entrepreneur. I use their um, their products because they have amazing intimacy products and sexual wellness products to be able to align with a goal that you might have. So lots of different things and lots of different ways to connect for sure. But let's come back to the podcast. Okay. This is, like I said, season three. And I'm so humbly honored to be here. All right. Now at the or end of 2022, I was a little burnt out. Uh, I did that to myself as an entrepreneur, as somebody who had these really massive goals about business, especially around the coaching aspect of what I do. I really wanted to do it big. And so I'm, as an entrepreneur, but as an adhd -er and as Rachel Vote, I tend to be somebody that puts a lot on my plate because uh, the, the deconstruction that I'm working on around success is the fact that tangible production is my means of success. Like I have to have something physical to prove to you that I worked hard. And uh, so at the end of 2022, I just, I made an internal commitment. And then I told a couple of small groups of people, like my other entrepreneur friends, basically, I'm not doing anything new in 2022. So I guess that's what have been in the end of, end of 2021. So I totally misspoke early, but you get it. So in 2022, I committed, I was going to keep on the beaten path in terms of keeping my business alive. I was going to definitely continue to focus to grow, but I was not going to go out and do so many new things. Um, this was important because like, and the reason I'm sharing this with you is because if you're somebody who is incubating a new idea, this is important to hear because again, when we get ready to make change, we want to do it big and we want to do it right away. And we also want to do it to perfection so that it feels successful. Right. And, uh, what I have learned at least about my personality and the way that I do things, and I do think that this is a neurodivergency trait is that one, I get bored of things very easily. So I need to make sure that I understand that a routine for me is not going to be the same day after day, week after week, month after month, and even year after year. And that needs to be my routine that I'm okay with shaking things up, that I'm okay with evaluating uh, my energy levels and what I can produce because I don't want to produce half-ass shit. And I also don't want to produce anything inauthentically because I need a paycheck. I want to produce it because I feel right in the moment, that it feels aligned with my message and so on and so forth. So at the end of 2021, when I was like, oh, like part of it was like, I just didn't feel like I had anything worthy to say anymore because I felt like I'd just been talking kind of like right now. Uh, but also in addition, just because I just needed a little bit of time to myself. So I have not filmed a podcast since the end of, uh, it's been a year. And then throughout the year of 2022, I had, this might seem like a small number to some, but it rocked my world. It was three people individually who reached out to me and said, hey, are you ever gonna do the podcast again? I just binged all your episodes. I love it. Uh, there was people who had already listened to it that said, I'm really looking forward to bringing this back. There was uh, another person who was an existing client that was like, I really enjoy your podcast. I really want you to bring it back. So just by those three people who individually reached out to me, it really, really comforted my heart because again, I was kind of in a place where I was reflecting on the podcast thinking, 
is this even doing anything <laughs> for anybody? Like, is this just me using my platform to work out my own shit? Or is this really connecting with people? So uh, from those three people, if you if you're in business, if you're a confident business owner, if you're a believing business owner, you kind of know the scale. Meaning, like, if we switch this around, if you if you've already you know uh, it, you've always been told you have to hear ten no's to hear a yes, right? Well, that scale applies to everything. So if three individual people are reaching out to me, that that means that there's probably 10 to 15 other people who are thinking the same thing at least and out of those 10 to 15 there's probably close to half of 100 or even 100 people who at least have heard the podcast and are like oh, I'd listen to this again so I say all that because that's why we're back <laughs> basically right is because after I took some time off in 2022 to really put some uh, new focus into other goals and other growth um, and after humbly being asked and then kind of accidentally probing around to other people, you know, it was kind of more of like in conversation, you know, I'm really surprised that people ask me about the podcast. And then uh, if you are familiar with Spotify too, they give you like an end of the year wrap up. And I posted this onto my social media, but my podcast had grown and it wasn't much because I'm a little, I'm a little business, I'm a local business, but it, the fact that there was no new podcasts that were put up and people were still listening to it. That's it. That's that, that's it. That's it. Drop the mic. But boom, we're here. That's why we're here is because of you, basically. And I am so grateful because the podcast really is an outlet for me, for, for sure. But there's really no other space right now that you can just word vomit for an hour. And it's really socially acceptable anymore, right? If you're on, if you're on my Facebook page, I try to make my lives in Facebook 10 to 15 minutes or shorter because you all have goldfish attention spans and nobody can listen to the whole thing. But it's really hard to get a deep, committed transparent message about growth in the goldfish attention span that is TikTok where you have three minutes or less and three minutes is is still too much for people. They want a minute or less, right? So the podcast is one of the last forms right now for me that I have this availability if I'm not individually coaching you. And so I'm so grateful to be here. So what I wanted to spend the opening session or opening podcast of season three is, of course, just recapping, which we've kind of already done in this first seven-ish minutes. Uh, and then, you know, talking about what 2023 is going to look like in terms of the podcast, in terms of like where I'm coming from and the coaching aspect, what basically really what I can give to you in 2023, where I really hope you'll put yourself in 2023 and so on and so forth, right? So I kind of already uh, gave you a clue into what 2022 was like for me, uh, but I have to tell you, you know, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again, there are no coincidences. And I did a whole podcast on this concept of there, you know, when people say that phrase, everything happens for a reason, some people get really, really offended by that. I believe that to its core is true. And there's a cliche version of it where it's basically like, you know, if you're having a crappy day and somebody says, oh, well, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, that feels like crap piling on top of crap. But the existential truth to anything is that everything happened for a reason, right? The reason I'm sitting here in this podcast kicking off season three is because I was burnt out and needed to take a break. And then in a span of a break of a year, I had people reach out to me and ask me, are you to do the podcast again? I'd love to do the podcast again. And not just by the way, listeners, I had people who had been on the podcast before that was like, hey, could we maybe do a segment together again? Oh, God, I love that. Of, of course, I'll have you back. Uh, so, you know, it just kept compiling in that regard. And that is the reason why we're here. We wouldn't be here if more people hadn't reached out to me, honestly. Like if I would have had to sit through 2022 and process is the podcast important for my time? Does it really benefit my business? Um, or is it just something that I'm using for self? I probably would have went down that course. Like, it's just me. Like, nobody's nobody's missing it. Nobody's, but people were. So the reason we are here is because of that. When you beat, beat back any action up, any experience that you're having in your life, there is a reason why you're here, okay? It's not just because the universe was like, oh, I'm just gonna throw this, this, this book at her. Throw the book at her, that's a legal term. But, but that's what it is. Quite literally, it happened for a reason, right? But more importantly, whoo, 2022 was another year of reckoning for me. And I am very, very grateful for it. I'm just going to kick that. Let, let's just get that right out, out of the way. Because I know that for some of you who are doing personal development and you're in year one, you're, you're in year two, you're maybe six months in. You're going to go through the same cycle that I did. Um, and I just said this in a, a social media platform or a social media post the other day that I kind of giggled at myself because it's hard to say that it's a pattern when I've only been doing personal development for five years, but very intentionally for three. So for me to sit here and go, there's a pattern to it, it feels a little asinine because who am I to say? <laughs> who am I to say? I've only been doing personal development for a little bit, but 
from my experience personally, from my client's experience, and then of course about all of the things that I read when it comes to personal development, spiritual growth, and things like that, there are 1,000% patterns. I'm not the only person out there that's experienced this. And so I believe that the information I'm going to give you today is true. I believe that the universe has asked me to give it to you so that not only can you sit in your power, in your growth, and really understand that you're meant to be where you're at, but also that you are supported. If you don't feel that directly with bodies around you right now, like your family and your friends, I get it. Hear my heart when I say it's aching for you because I get it. You're not alone though. And we really need to talk about that. Um, and then I squirreled myself out of something else I was going to say about all this. But but this is all true, okay? Now, so 2022, I could feel, I could feel a shift happening. And um, it was a very interesting place. I was talking about patterns before. That's what I was talking about, right? But this is a pattern. So let me give you the, the overview of the pattern. And then we'll kind of get into the weeds of it, okay? So, so far, what I've been able to deduce using fancy words today, is that when somebody enacts the decision to make change in their life, 99% of us won't, right? We get an inkling for change, but we don't do it. And this was me until 2018. I want to be thinner. That was the phrase I used in my head, right? And it wasn't that I wanted to be healthy. It wasn't that I wanted to feel good. It was that I want to be thin. I want to be rich. I want to be successful. I want to be in love or happy, I guess, is probably the the worse of those statements. Love is great, but to just be happy is very vague. So these were all things that I wanted, but I was asking for them in the wrong manner. And so what happened? I didn't change. I didn't change for 32 years of my life. Uh, even though I did yo-yo dieting, even though I dated a lot of people, even though I had multiple jobs, even though I was an entrepreneur at this time. So no glass ceiling, set my own pay, set my own hours, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, it wasn't working. And so that's important to remember is that 99% of people will want change in their life, but they'll never make a change in their life, okay? And it's it's not something to get weighed down on. It's just a recollection to awareness. And the reason that most of us don't change is because we don't get to the second portion of change. The second portion of change is feeling sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. It's uh, tired of the same old, same old. And it also generally includes learning a lot, all right? It can be any of those three components, in my opinion, but it's often a mix of those, right? Because you get sick and tired of sick and tired, and then you learn a lot about a new way to live life. You um, get sick and tired of sick and tired, but then you witness somebody else make change, and you learn that it's possible. So... There can be a whole mix of these things, right? So that is phase two. So phase one is wanting change, like just being sick and tired, right? But it's not enough. It's not enough to want change, all right? Because we can want to buy a bigger house. We can we can want to paint our walls a different color. We can want to do the laundry today, but it's not enough, okay? And here's a really interesting segment, by the way, is that when you talk about feelings, which we've talked about on podcasts before, you have to remember that to me, there's a frequency to all emotion. And you already know this to be true, because when you think about not feeling so good, that feels different than feeling good. So if I have this, you can't see me if you're listening, of course, but if I even just put a line wherever the line is and below the line is anything that it does not feel so good, anything above the line feels good and anything right at the line is neutrality. Okay, so neutrality means basically ambivalence. We don't feel one way or the other, right? But we're content, but we're not good and we're not bad. So when we feel a bad feeling, we know how that feels. It feels heavy. It feels stagnant. It feels depressing. It feels anxious, right? And when we feel good, a good feeling, we know that that feels different. It feels light. It feels airy. It feels bubbly. It feels like no effort is even needed, right? So we know the difference between these. And you know the varying degrees of this too. You know what it feels like to feel really bad and a little bit bad and close to neutrality where it's like I'm kind of in a mood, but ugh. And then you know how it feels to kind of feel like in a little bit better mood, but still ugh. And then above that, right, you know what it feels to feel good. And then you know what it feels to feel really good. So you understand that. You know that to be true, okay? So when we have this concept about feelings, feelings are necessary because it's a precursor to everything else. And we're just not tapped into those emotions, right? So when we function on good feelings, it's, it's a good thing, of course, because it just, it helps us. It helps us to be lighter. It helps us to be more actionable because we feel good, all right? But what's ironic is that this is something that I learned as I was studying emotions. And I think it's so important to really realize is that anger is better than depression, Right? You wouldn't think so because when we classify our emotions, anger feels like a scary emotion, an almost unsafe emotion. But I read this fantastic book. Oh my gosh, it's, um, I'll have to find it for you if you're interested. Uh, but if you think about it, it takes more energy to be angry than it does to be depressed because depressed is just like a feeling of loss, of, of loss, like loss of everything, but you're lost yourself. And so when that feels slow and stagnant and you can't function, you can function in anger. 
Anger actually motivates some people, does it not? So it's something very important to keep in mind because when we're depressed, we probably need help, whether that's from self or an outside source or a, um, a trained professional. We might need that. We might even need medication to help alter our brain chemistry to get us back to a more functioning level. But it's so important to recognize that because when you're feeling angry, it, that's that's motivation. It's now that you have a, a fire lit in your soul to try to climb back up to the feeling of neutrality or above. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that up because it's really important. Okay. So um, as I was discussing, right, um, back in 2022, I was feeling. I was feeling things and I knew that most of the things I was feeling were subconscious, but because of my awareness around it, I, I could feel it better than I had ever been before because the past version of me, the person who wanted change, but had zero awareness, right? Didn't know any better. And the, you have to also understand another important lesson is that the body does what the body does out of efficiency, everything that we do is out of efficiency. We log memories from our past so that the next time we encounter them, we know how to process this in this moment faster. This makes sense, right? Because after you learn how to make ramen, you never have to look at the ramen package again. Why? Because your brain has logged it for efficiency. If every single time you grabbed a package of ramen out of the cupboard and you had to look at the package, remember to get a pot, remember to fill it up with water, remember to turn on your stove at a certain temperature, make sure that the water boiled, make sure that you put the noodles in, make sure you set the timer for those noodles, make sure you drain those noodles, make sure that you took your pack it out make sure that you sprinkle that packet on make sure you stirred up your noodles that's a step-by-step -step process that takes you more time than just remembering so everything we do everything that the brain does for us is about efficiency and you have to remember that that is the extent of everything you do in your life good habits bad habits and neutral habits the only difference between you and somebody massively successful and that's your comparison of successful not mine the only difference between you and that person it's not the education it's not the money they make a year. It's not um, the motivation even that they have to continue said life. It's the habits they have formed around that life. They needed a habit to get up early. They needed a habit to go to the gym consistently. They needed a habit to stay focused in school to get good grades. They needed a habit to, you know, um, work a, a, sh a job and go to school at the same time. They had, they had to form a habit around working um, an intern job you get it, what I'm saying. It formed a habit. Mine, friends. I had habits too. I still have habits. Everybody has habits, by the way. But in the 2018 Rachel had habits. Those habits were thinking about wanting to change, but then never enacting the change. Desiring the change, but never actually getting through with the change. Now, the reason I write, really want to bring this up is because some of it's your fault. Most of it's not. Now, when we look at things that have happened to us, understanding is very, very good for the logical brain because the logical brain is generally what drives most of us. Most of us are not running on emotion. Most of us are not running on spiritual guidance, even though we should because the language is accurate and it ultimately is leading us to the things that we want. But that's just not the earthbound game. The primal body, the primal body is older than the conscious mind. You know that, you know that to be true because if you think about, we know Neanderthals as they are Neanderthals, as I used to call them when I was a child, uh, they existed before conscious species. Conscious, spe conscious species is us. It is us who are separate from animals, animal minds. Animal minds are what? Primal. They are there to survive, reproduce, and that's it. They don't even, I mean, finding shelter is part of that survival. So they reproduce and they survive. That's what animal brain does. We were at one point an animal brain. We were Neanderthals. Neanderthals, however you want to call it. There's lots of subspecies of humans, actually. And that was not something I learned until my 30s. I did not know that until my 30s that there was massive civilizations. There was massive types of humanoids. Uh, and we, we, we declare ourselves the first conscious species. We don't, I mean, we could be wrong. We might find that out later, of course. But even if we're comparing this conscious mind to a primal mind, right? Primal mind was just that. It grew from a primal brain of an animal. And so at one point, our only focus was to reproduce and to stay alive. The body, the body's older than the mind. So when you learn efficiencies, when you learn programming, because it's not just an individual habit forming process in your lifetime, you were given things genetically. You were given things culturally speaking, right? So this is so important because a lot of us are getting to a point where we can really wrap our brains around the understanding that our reality was implied for us. We were in a state of programming from the day we were born till actually 25, but the most programmable years of us getting our habits formed are till about year seven. So from zero to year seven, 
everything we take in around us from our parents, teachers, pastors, caregivers, government, celebrities, social media, all of the things that are influencing us, those are the cues that we get. So that makes sense, right? Because I learned that I wanted to make sure that I was potty trained because of social acceptance. If I wet my pants at 12, people are probably going to make fun of me. So I learned that as a social cue. So where did they learn that though? Where did your parents and your grandparents and your grandparents, where did they learn that? So you have to think about the fact that all of these things have been passed down, right? Okay, that makes sense. Tradition, teaching, raising families. So we get that. So when you take that to the DNA level, this is true too. This is very true. It's called epigenetics, okay? And I love, I love that we're venturing into an era where scientists are literally studying the woo-woo, okay? They're never going to use that language. But if you check out the Nobel Prize that was won in 2022, it was because they are starting to prove that consciousness does not start here. The, the theory for the Nobel Prize winner was that consciousness is not local. That's what they said. And what that means is that your thoughts do not originate from here, they originate from a different place and then are transmuted to your brain, which then transmutes to your mouth if you speak it out loud and so on and so forth. This was so funny to me, like so funny in the best way possible because I already knew that. I knew that from like probably two years ago from studying epigenetics and brain bliss and uh, your neuro pathways and things like that. I learned all of that in the spiritual woo woo stuff. And so I just love that we're here. And it's just kind of funny to me because two years ago, if I would have brought that up, some people would have thought I was batshit crazy. And some people still think other woo woo people are batshit crazy. But when we, when we, when we finally assign a scientist to it and we classify it with Nobel prize winning words and money and so on and so forth, now it's legit. That's okay. I'm just happy that we're having the conversation to be frank, but that's the point, right? Is that we have learned that even, even our thoughts don't start here. So there's way more to the picture than we really understand. So why did I bring that up? Because things are passed down, right? Your body keeps the score. If you've never heard of that, that's so true. There's a reason why it's called dis-ease of your body, disease of your body, because you're not processing any bad emotion that you've ever felt or held onto has been stored in your body as an emotion because where did it go? That energy cannot be transmuted. That energy has to transform. And the only way it transforms through your body after you feel it is by feeling it and processing it. Okay, where did it originate from? It originated from your body. So when people don't get this, this is so cool to me for us to be talking about because literally an emotion's felt in the body, is it not? Yes, you already know that. And where it's felt is specific to you, right? If you feel nervous, sometimes it's in your tummy. If you feel um, upset, that might be in your heart. If you feel um, nauseous, that might be in the pit of your stomach, right? But you literally feel emotions and they're associated to a cue in your body. This is one of the largest things that personal development is about, to be honest, and emotional intelligence is so many of us are detached from feeling an emotion and recognizing it in our body because it's such a bad feeling. We've been programmed this bad feeling. I don't want it. And so instead of addressing it and connecting to wherever it is in your body, you bypass it. You bypass it by ignoring the conversation. You bypass it by smoking a cigarette. You bypass it by shoving a cupcake into your mouth because nicotine alters your chemistry because sugar alters your chemistry. These things alter your body chemistry. And even if it took you from depressed, which was below the line of neutrality, just to neutrality, it's still better than depression. Is it not? It might not be as good as great up here, but it still elevated you to a better feeling than bad. Not great, but better than bad. And so this is why we do it. We do it to avoid the bad feeling. But where did the feeling go? It didn't leave, right? And you already know, it's been proven for decades that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It only changes shape. So if it was not something that was processed as it was supposed to, it has stayed in your body right? So, okay. So no big deal. Let's just like visually speaking, I'm just going to like pretend to put like a, a couple of dots on my face, right? So this was some anger I never addressed. And this was some sadness I never addressed. And this was some rejection I never addressed. And here's some, oops, that's my microphone, but here's some humiliation I never addressed, right? No big deal. Cause they're just kind of hanging out and majority of my body's still there. But how about the next time I feel rejection? That space is going to go from a nickel size to like a quarter size. The next time I feel depressed, it's going to go from a, a dime size to a quarter size. And after that, and the next time I feel depressed, that, that quarter size is going to go to a half dollar. And the next time I feel depressed, that half dollar is going to completely fill my head. Okay. So visually speaking, the energy continues just to collect in the body. So when we say things like that person's such a pain in my ass and we have lower back pain, or I was so angry, I couldn't see straight and you have prescription glasses and contacts. Why? Do you think that happens? It's not just because the body starts to break down and you start to age. Otherwise, why would children have glasses? Can your body be preformed with poor vision? For sure. But why does it randomly happen at age six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Why does all of a sudden the vision deteriorate? 
because there's something blocking the vision. We don't want to see clearly, so we put that type of disease energy in our body. Okay, you don't have to believe me, but I think it makes a little bit of sense to you. Does it not? It makes sense to me, at least, I should say, right? So here's what we're talking about, right? We're talking about holding on to energy and not processing it, right? So then we end up, like, this, this is what I think about when I see older people who, um, like, have a hunchback and they either need a walker or a cane. My mom is this person, by the way. And they have to, like, lean forward. My mom can't even sit upright for a very long period of time. She usually has to, like, bend over a countertop. Why? Because my mom has so much pent up emotion from a lifetime that she has not dealt with that it is literally affecting her body. Her mother, her mother walks better than she does. So it's not a comparison to say that my mother hasn't suffered. It is not a comparison to say that my mother doesn't have a slip disc in her back because that's a lot of what it stemmed from. But do you see the correlation? My mother is the health, unhealthiest person in the family. My mother has the most pent up trauma that she has never addressed and it is clear. It is clear. My mother is still the only one in her family in active addiction. Everybody else who was an alcoholic no longer um, participates in that, I guess I should say. So it's just interesting to me to see that correlation. She is the sickest of all of them out of her brothers and sisters uh, by far. And one of her brothers had a like a kidney transplant for crying out loud. So anyway, I digress, right? So anyway, we we're talking about like being in this moment of the process basically of personal development. Because in the first step of that, it is self-awareness. I don't know if there's a particular order that this has to go in. Like, I don't know if you could come back to personal development. I'm sorry, per, um, self-awareness as like your second or third step because everybody's roadmap is different, but I don't think so. Because if you don't have awareness about who you are, if you don't have awareness about the internal dialogue that is literally running your show, if you don't have awareness about connecting those actual feelings to your body when you're feeling them, I don't think you can move on. I think that you, be, you just maintain the majority of what the masses do right now, which is that. If I feel angry... I don't process where I'm feeling in my body. I'm just going to start to shout at you. That's not Rachel's method, of course, because when I don't feel good, uh, and any any feeling that's not neutrality and above, when I don't feel good, I eat. When I don't feel good, I smoke pot. When I don't feel good, those I mean, those are those are my my vices right now. But I also used to shop. When I didn't feel good, I also drank. When I didn't feel good, uh, I ate some more. Okay. When I didn't feel good, I created drama and stirred up with, I fought with somebody else about something else so that, again, I felt better about the situation that I was going through. Okay. So, so important to feel your emotions because when you feel the actual emotion, then you can recognize what it's bothering in you in your body, right? Instead of avoiding it, you would just address it. You just address it. So important. So that is one of the very first steps in personal development because when we have awareness, that doesn't allow, well, <laughs> you're going to keep bypassing your emotions just as a heads up when you first start off because you don't know any better. You just recognize it all of a sudden as your habit. Your habit is when I feel emotions, I do something else instead of feeling those emotions. That's the first habit, okay? Or awareness, I should say, okay? So the reason I bring this up is because that is what phase one is all about. And phase one is, I believe, structured the way it is in personal development because it is alluring, when you start to enact a little bit of change, when you start to feel good, when you start to believe your own potential, when you, are, when you start to understand that your value is intrinsic and that it's built from within and that nobody on the outside needs to validate it, uh, but you still need to work to understanding and believing it for self, it's a game changer. It is a game changer because all of a sudden you recognize and understand that everything you ever sought was just that. It's validation. That perfect relationship that you really want with the marriage and the kids, it's validation that I was uh, that I, I, I will be successful if I have those things. The big fat bank account, I will be successful if I have those things. That big huge house, I will be successful if I have the big huge house. These are the correlations that we've been given by society, by your family, by your loved ones, because this is what we've agreed upon socially is the deeming factor of success, Okay. And that's phase one, phase one, uh, phase one for me also involved like literally understanding that there was something, somebody, a voice inside my head and it is narrated by me, but it ain't me. If anything, it is a combination voice of the criticalness that was my father. It is the embarrassment that my mother, my mother, um, from time to time, you know, would just embarrass the crap out of me. Uh, and that's really humiliation from my sister because those are different. Um, and I could go on and on, right? But this is my conglomeration of emotions and driving forces, okay? So when I started to recognize the, criti the critical voice inside my head, that was self-awareness, that there, it's literally that two people are, are living amongst this body at all times, right? Primal body, 
is more ancient than conscious mind. Neanderthals walked around in bodies before they decided that there was more to life than reproduction and survival. So the primal body runs on emotion. It's meant to. It's supposed to. Because I'm feeling unsafe, I need to be able to check that. If I feel unsafe, that means that something around me in this primitive world could kill me. It might be a saber-toothed tiger. It might be a floor of hot lava. I, I, it might be poisonous berries. It doesn't matter what it is. But something has been alerted inside this ancient body because the body's older than the brain in conscious form, we have to acknowledge that because it runs the show. We are such unique beings in a sense that if you were to see, well, this is a good example, actually, if, you, if you're on TikTok and you've seen Bunny, that the dog, there's so many dogs out there now that have those like little button things that they can communicate with their owners. But Bunny, who's like a Labradoodle, I think, was one of the very first dogs to have this on social media. And this dog, her button platform is so big that she can have practical full-on conversations with her owners. It's been a couple of years now since this dog has had that. And what is everybody talking about? The fact that recently this dog has come to the understanding that it's a being and that it has an end date, basically. Like there was this whole TikTok conversation about the dog really realizing its awareness and knowing it was going to die someday. And people were very conflicted about how cool this was. That there was like literally uh, animal evolution happening before our eyes. As we're, we're witnessing this dog learning how to communicate and speak. That's different than teaching a dog cues. Like sit, hello, or sit, stay, speak. That is totally different than being able to communicate. with. Th th they're different. They're so different, okay? And so there's one side of the fence, of course, where people think this is amazing. This is awesome. And there's the other side of the fence that are like, this is a natural. Like, look what you did to your dog. Not natural in the sense that we can't do this anymore. More like, look what you did to your dog. You gave your dog consciousness. Okay. I think it's interesting. I don't know, honestly, um, if it's a bad thing or a good thing. But then I also saw a TikTok where this guy was swimming with a shark and he's known this shark for years, years and years and years. And so they were like buddies. Um, her name was Emma, I believe. You can find this on a TikTok. But why was it so intriguing? Because the year of COVID, he didn't get to go scuba diving as often. And so he had a year period where he didn't get to see this great white shark. I think it was a great white. It was a big shark. And after COVID, he went swimming. He found her. And he said that she's so nuzzly and so sweet and so cuddly. And I just, I love to watch videos about this. Like there was a pet alligator one. I put this on my TikTok. I stitched it once. Because what is happening before our eyes is animals are literally evolving. They are coming out of primal brain which is to reproduce and survive, to affection. Alligators and sharks, letting humans pet them. Not because we're not a, we're not a food source for them. Like, I, that's a common misconception, of course. When alligators and sharks attack, that is absolutely out of defense mechanisms, right? Absolutely. It's not because they want to eat us most of the time. 99.9%. They're, they're not intrinsically attracted to eating humans. And so when there's a symbiotic relation, it's not different than dogs, by the way. There's a symbiotic relationship between beast and human. Dogs used to murder humans. They, the wolves will still do it. Big saber-toothed tiger cats that have, you know, transitioned into tigers would still kill a human mountain lions if they saw you on a trail. But then you can see the tiger king who has, quote-unquote, domesticated these animals that you can just, like, walk in a pen with them and they're not going to attack you. That is a correlation we need to be paying attention to. We are proving ourselves wrong with this understanding that animals are just animals. They're stupid creatures that don't have any consciousness. It's just that their primal brain is still running. I don't know what it was that switched human brain from Neanderthal brain to conscious thinking. Some people say it was magic mushrooms. Some people say it was when animal or humans went from vegetation only to eating meat and the protein in meat. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's obvious that it happened. And so I don't know what it's going to be for like a swing of animals to kind of come to this other side, but we're witnessing it happen. That's so cool, in my opinion, because it only is more further proof, by the way, that the body runs on primalness. The body runs on efficiency. It was programmed eons ago to know that anger and depression and sadness are not good feelings for the body. And it's alerting you that these are not safe feelings and we need to address them and we need to move on. Do animals, okay, antelope, by the way, this is a good example. Do, uh, do animals themselves get stuck in bad feelings? No, right? They don't, as far as we know. You know, you might know this, like when an antelope is getting chased on the savannah and if it doesn't get caught by a predator, then it, it shakes uncontrollably for a certain amount of minutes after it's been chased. Why? Because there's adrenaline running through the body. The adrenaline was the burst of energy that the animal needed to outrun its predator. 
So the body was doing what it was supposed to. And when you come down from an instance like that, there's still after effects, right? You don't immediately go from feeling unsafe to feeling safe. So the body does what it needs to to help you feel safe unless you have a regulated system, unless you have an ability to regulate your own system, I should say, right? So very interesting to think about because the only animals who are obese or have anxiety, separation anxiety, like little chihuahuas, domesticated animals, right? They know how to regulate out in the wild. They know when to eat. They know when not to eat. They even know when to reproduce. We don't even know that. We don't even know when our bodies are in cue to reproduce. We just see somebody saunting around with those sexy ass hips and we think I got to have that, right? We don't even correlate that. That could be the fact that she's ovulating and that I have high testosterone right now. So I definitely want that partner. I want her to have my babies. We don't think about any of that shit because it's primal thinking, that is now translated into modern thinking. So we see these correlations happening between animal world and our world. And we were we are not that far away from being animals. The earth is billions of years old. Millions or billions, whatever you believe. Humans are not, we are not that old. So we are babies here on this planet that has been absolutely functioning before we got here. We'll absolutely function after we get, or we leave. So such an important correlation for me to really bring up. Because we as human beings who are going through personal development, you're literally evolving. You're literally evolving yourself as we speak and then you're actively choosing to accelerate that evolution because most humans won't, right? They're just going to live what they know. They're going to live with what they were programmed. They were going to live by what their parents, teachers, pastors, everybody else influenced for them. And here we are. Okay. So we're 36 minutes into this podcast and I, oh, and I just about lost you there, but I haven't even gotten to why, you know, um, 2022 was what it was for me, but this might have to be part two. I don't know. We'll see where, we'll see where it goes. So I'm really sorry that I dropped the phone like that, but anyway, uh, so 2022, First step, well, actually, I'm talking about two things at once, right? Because that first step, again, is that recognition, that acknowledgement and awareness of those feelings and emotions. And the first leg of your personal development is wonderful. Like I said, it's intoxicating because it is that breakthrough of having always wanted to make change and dabbling into ways of making change. It might not be that you strategically make a lot of change initially right out the gate. That's okay, friends. But the understanding and acceptance of your capability to make that change is really what seeps in here. It is the wherewithal and confidence that you feel internally that, yes, I can do this. Yes, I believe in myself that I can do this. Yes, this is going to be different than the time I did that fad diet. This is going to be different than the time I signed up for that class and never went to it. This is going to be different. I, you just have to hear my heart when I tell you, you'll know because you'll feel different. It's the same feeling I felt the first time I started dating my husband. After years, years of chasing feelings and chasing ideas about what a relationship needed to look like for me to feel safe and successful. He was the first person that I didn't immediately say I love you. He was the first person that I wasn't immediately like we should move in together. He wasn't the first person that I was like, oh my God, we have to get married now to have your babies tomorrow. Like all of the cliche things that you might do in a brand new relationship. He was the first person that I just sat and go, I want to enjoy this. This feels good. I want more. But I also feel safe. I felt the safety. I felt the safety. So you, you just have to trust me. You will feel different. And so that is why it's so intoxicating is because it's like you have breathed fresh air for the first time in your life and you see the world differently. You are inspired by things. You empathize with everybody. And it's, it's also just because you just know inside that you're tired of feeling that way. And so the honeymoon phase of personal development lasted for quite a while for me. I would say upwards of two years, maybe two and a half years. And then I got hit with my first dark night of the soul. Technically my second, because my entire life was a dark night of the soul. So the dark night of the soul is the terminology in the woo-woo world that you basically get knocked off of your pedestal of personal development. And it's heart wrenching because when you start making those really positive changes and you're in flow, so nothing can really knock you off that pedestal in that first year, two years, two and a half years, whatever it is that you start to find yourself in that really productive wave, you get knocked on your pedestal and you have a small amount of ignorance or a lot that you didn't think bad things were going to happen to you after you figured your shit out. Why would bad things happen to me? Not only do I understand the powers of the universe, which is like attracts like. So if I'm feeling good, I should only attract good things in my life. Um, but I also understand the logistics behind execution of action. I understand both sides of the fence. So I shouldn't be having bad things happen to me. Why are bad things happening to me? Because that is a lesson I learned on my own is that personal development does not make you impermeable to bad things. Bad things are bound to happen to you for two reasons. Number one, because we're an earthbound world. You're not in ethereal spiritual world. You came from that. You'll go back to that because once this body dies, you ain't taking it with you, including the brain. What are you taking? The energy 
that is going to change because it cannot be created. It cannot be destroyed. So where is the energy that functions this house going to go? Wherever it came from. That's my opinion. That's my theory. It feels right to me. So when you're out in the spiritual plane, everything feels good. Nothing bad happens to you because it's all unconditional love. That is the truth in my opinion. So when you're in the earthbound game and you start to remember that you're a spiritual being having a human experience, you remember that there is duality on planet earth. It will never go away. If you believe in other planets, you probably know this to be true, that Earth is the densest, well, you believe in other planets because there are other planets, but if you believe in life on other planets, I guess I should say, if you believe that other beings are experiencing life on other planets, you probably have heard, if you have never heard this before, is a very, very common theory amongst spiritual people, people who have had near-death experiences, so they've gone to the other side in their opinion and come back, collectively, everybody says that Earth is the densest planet. Everybody says that when you've experienced life other places, whether it's in the ethereal or on other planets and other light years and other millennia and other planes of existence, however you deem that, everybody says that people choose, we choose to come to Earth to play the Earthbound game. It is the hardest of all the video games out there. So if you compare Earth to any other planet in a video game sense, this is the hardest. And we choose to come here because we played a lot of the other games out there. A lot of those games were fun, but they were too easy for us. And so now we're ready for a challenge. And this makes so much sense to me. And if you don't believe it, that's okay. But I would beg of you to consider it because it offers so much relief in a sense of a world that you're like, this world is shit. I can't believe we live here. I can't believe bad things happen to us. But when you understand the whole picture, it gives you a sense of relief because it's not that the earth is bad. It's not that human beings are bad people. Intrinsically, none of us are. We're all humans who have done bad things. We're all humans who have had bad things happen to us, which then drives our behavior because we were programmed with those other behaviors. So, so important to remember because when you're playing the earthbound game, duality exists. It cannot not exist. This game here on earth was meant to have black and white thinking, basically. We have been conditioned and we are taught from the moment we exist that there's good and there's bad, that there's thin and there's fat, there's rich and there's poor, there's healthy and unhealthy. That everything has a black and white side to it. Everything has an opposite reaction to it. And I'm not trying to convince you that that's not accurate. What I am trying to help you understand is that that means that you're always going to swing because there is an equal and opposite reaction for every action. That is literally a law that's been proven, yes? So every time you're feeling fantastic, you're going to have your pendulum swing to the other side because it's the name of the game. It's the nature of the human experience. So that's one reason that happens. One reason it happens, you have to, okay? It doesn't matter how good you become at anything. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how much you are in love with your partner. Bad things will happen to you because of phase two. Well, the other reason why. The other reason why is because you're out co-creating. Even if you become like the Buddha, even if you became like Jesus, which I think Jesus still had bad days, even if you become like Eckhart Tolle, if you've not, if you don't know who that person is, I highly recommend it. That person does not look like he can be knocked off his rocker to have a bad day if his pants were on fire. I freaking love Eckhart Tolle. So he just lives in the presence of now, basically. So even if you are those people, you still are co-creating out with millions of other people who inhabit planet Earth. So your best friend is going to pass away. Your partner is going to have a bankruptcy. Your mother is going to have an alcohol addiction, okay? So whatever it is, whoever it is, whoever is important to you, and multiple people, of course, you're co-creating with these people. They're a part of your experience. You're going to be out bumping around into them. So their realities, their creations are going to intertwine with yours. So we're never going to be impermeable to bad things. Very important to realize, okay? So bad things will happen. And this is when we call these dark nights of the soul. And ultimately on the woo-woo side of it, what's really happening, friends, is that it means that you've you've moved on to a new lesson to learn, right? One of the very first lessons I had to learn in personal development is that I was not the person I thought I was. Not only because I didn't feel like I was living in my optimum self, but because I was believing things that were taught to me all my life. I was not believing my own belief system. That's not true. I was believing my own belief system. I wasn't executing and living within my belief system because I thought I had to, I had to, live in other people's to be accepted, right? So important to learn. So that was the first step of personal development. When I started feeling depression and anxiety kicking back in, at first, I, thankfully, the brief period of going through the why is this happening to me didn't last very long because I didn't want it to last very long. I didn't want to stay there. I'd stayed there for 32 years of my life. So when it started to happen to me in personal development, it was like a very clear, I just need to get clear on this. What is happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Why am I feeling these feelings? And so on and so forth. And the difficult part about that was basically that I 
was feeling the subconscious pull at those feelings, but I wasn't consciously aware it was happening. Like, I, this is very difficult to explain, but as the dark night of the soul started to creep in for me towards the end of 2021 and beginning of 2022, it was like, I knew, I knew there was things I needed to address. And I would say I was 2% sure that I knew what they were, but I had 98% consciously blocked it out. It was something I wasn't ready to deal with deal with. It was something I didn't have the tools yet to deal with. It was something that was beyond my immediate reality. And so I was nervous about how to um, venture into it and so on and so forth. So I could go on about like all of these things all day. It, it, so the basis of this guys is, is it was my kid. It was my biological son. I knew, I knew that it was past due to really put some focus into him. And that was basically what this year was my, my top priority. And I could, I can spend a whole podcast on this. I might, I haven't decided yet because it's really out of respect for my kid. The gist of what I want to give you is that this was a painful awareness that I had done such great work on myself. I felt very, very secure with who I was, my ability, uh, also the wherewithal about continuing to grow as necessary because I wanted to. But I knew, I knew, and it might make me a little emotional here, but I knew that my little kiddo was going to pull up my heartstrings and already was because I could tell he was going through some stuff, but I didn't know how to talk to him about it. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to help him through it. And I didn't even know if he was going to be receptive to it, I think. There was a lot of reasons why. I'm not, I'm not proud to say it took some things happening in my life to really say, okay, get your shit together. Your kid needs you. But it did. So, um... The reason this is so important is because like the distraction, I'm going to use it as a distraction because I, when I went through personal development, I kind of just thought I was going to be my own problem. Like I, like with Olivia, my youngest, she was born at a time where I had personal awareness or I was coming into my personal awareness. And so I hardly ever worry about how I'm raising her because I feel consciously present. I feel like my intention's very strong. And even though I have that for both of my boys as well, they they came into my life before I had personal development. And Cole specifically, who is my biological child, right? He is a product, quite literally, because when I got into personal development, if, if we say five years ago, he was 10. If we're being generous, he was 10 when I started to come into my own awareness. But until I even did work, he wasn't like 12. He was 12 until I started becoming a better person, quote unquote. So his most programmable years from zero to seven, as we talked about before, and he's still in programmable years, right? But from zero to seven, he was in a situation with two adults who were roughly 21 when he was born that had no awareness, who had no emotional language, who had come from quote unquote broken houses when it came to marriages and relationships, who didn't know how to speak to each other, who were both very prideful people uh, who fought all the time. And instead of resolving that, they would just walk away from one another or argue to have the last word. So he, and he didn't have consistency in terms of us being together. We were broken up all the time because we were basically just, you know, recreating our teenage drama. So I knew that this was my fault, right? Like I understand that my ex has a part to contribute in this too, but that's not my place to nitpick number one because I have my own responsibilities to be responsible for but anyways so 2022 was a year of a lot of focus around my kid a lot of necessary focus around my kid and really finding the language and pathway for him to understand that ne work needed to be done without chastising him because it's not his fault he's not a bad kid he is a kid who was raised in a blended family household that was dysfunctional until he was five years old. He did not have stability and consistency until I finally broke it off between my ex and I uh, after literally 12 years of back and forth and got into a relationship with my husband that had more stability. My poor child went through that. And then even after my husband and I got together before we were married and all that stuff and had another baby, he still had back and forthness between my ex and I and my ex and I weren't in great terms yet. So he still had to witness that tension. He still had to witness that lack of communication and so on and so forth. So I'm very proud to say that 2022 was a, a very big focus on him. Uh, there'll be a lot of focus in 2023 uh, of him and my other children as well. And just intrinsically parenting in general. So that that is that was my second dark night of the soul. It was... <sighs> It was the guilt as a mother in general, but then the added guilt about how I visibly felt like I fucked my kid up for, for not having the awareness, for not having the skill set and getting him into therapy so that I could say to him 
there's nothing wrong with you and I really want you to know that and I really want you to hear my heart that I don't think there's anything wrong with you at all. I think what's going on is that I dropped a ball as a parent. I didn't know any better at the time, but I really didn't set you up for success. And that's my goal here is to not only get you to know that that's my message and my absolute focus, but so that you understand when I ask you to do something or I tell you something, it's not at the expense that you're less than. That's because I didn't know any better when I didn't teach you A, B, and C or how to emote on one, two, and three. Like those those, those things are my fault, not your fault, but we got to navigate these together. So it, it was definitely a huge learning lesson. That was it, right? As I, I moved on from my first set of learning lessons around not knowing me and not knowing how to step into my belief system to the next step, which is not knowing how to resurrect the parenting skills that I should have never had to begin with. And so that definitely involves me very heavily, but it's also a focus on my kiddo. And that was what 2022 was. I just knew, I knew the, the very first quarter, I knew in the very first quarter that it was going to be a massive overhaul and a lot of time and focus. And I was committed to it. I was nervous. And I was, I I think that I, I even had a little bit of awareness that what if I fail? But I wasn't going to allow myself to. I was committed to him and committed to his success and committed to allowing for him to learn these tools to feel better himself before he was an adult. So that is the first dark night of the soul. Yours won't replicate identically to mine, of course. I do believe that most of us will probably have that first step of self-awareness. And then the second, when the pendulum swings to feeling so good to not feeling so good, that's the new lesson, right? This new lesson. The first lesson was about self. Second lesson was about parenting and love and unconditional love at that. Uh, and habit setting, by the way, that was like all wrapped into that second lesson. And I still feel like we're really reeling from that. I don't feel like I've come out of that entirely yet. But I can say without a doubt that the confidence that I had to kick off 2023 strong was because of the work that I did with him. I started to come around to feeling more confident again. I started coming around to understanding that I hadn't failed him, that I just was very, very aware that I had learned one way not to parent and that I am now in the habit, literally in the process of creating a new habit around parenting for myself. I didn't have any habits had no habits when I had my first kid. So I have to give myself grace around that and ask him to give me grace around that as well and to recognize that I try my best every single day with him. So very, very powerful for me because when the end of 2022 came together and me trying to decide what was I going to do to 2023, you know, a, a whole year's worth of thinking is too much for my ADHD brain. I cannot plan for where I'm going to be six months from now. I try to take things month by month. And, um, that's, I guess, basically where I'm at at this point. That's why the podcast is the way that it is. It's not formatted, you know, in a very sequential order and outline and content in that regard. It's just more of a free-flowing conversation, but it was necessary. That whole year was necessary um, to really allow my priority and focus to shift there. So if you're somebody who your last year doesn't look like this year or two years ago, and you're like, I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I don't know how to feel successful. I think you need to give yourself more grace and understanding that life is life. Like you've never been this age. You've never been in this season of life. You've never been in this position at your job, whether that's because you just started a new one or you've been at it for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years or three years. Everything that you do is new to you every single day. And I don't think we give ourselves enough credit because we make this assumption that because we watch other people do it for decades that adulting just becomes something that we naturally know how to do. We don't, especially with changing times, especially with um, changing circumstances. Like we're, most of us are not two, two parent functioning households that we started off with. We might be blended families. We might be single individuals. It doesn't matter. We're not giving ourselves enough grace to execute and flow through these changes that are happening. So, um, you know, be prepared for that. Be prepared that the, the place I can stand now, which I, I will have to admit that because it's not directly just me that this is happening to, like, like my kiddos are involved in this growth, which also extends to then my, my husband and my ex, right? Because they're involved in it too. So it's a whole family unit growth session that we're kind of going through. Um, but the awareness that listen you've gone through you've gone through massive change recently so you're you're built for this you can do this rachel not only that but because it, you know how good it feels to put in effort you know how good it feels to put unconditional love as the top priority in the way that you navigate through life you know how good that feels so Without even talking about the fact that I put 30 pounds on in 2022, that again was a coping mechanism because I gave up drinking. I am absolutely just 
California sober at this point. So all of those things contribute to that. It's very important to acknowledge. So I, I'm so proud. I'm so proud to say that like when I took like inventory of the, of the, at the end of the year, which I don't recommend that anybody has to start New Year's resolutions, start them whenever. Start them whenever the energy feels good, whenever the priority feels like it's at its highest for you and just make the shift happen. But it does tend to correlate for me. I feel new energy at the, the beginning of the year. So I really like to kind of run with that momentum. And so I did a lot of forecasting in November, which is not like me because I fly so much by the seat of my pants. I did a lot of forecasting in November to decide I was going to do some batch contenting. I filmed a lot of these podcasts, so they're going to be up and ready to go. Um, I did a lot of batch contenting for just like the social media platform so that I can really put my focus not only into my children, into my family, but to the things that I really want to do around business, which is to connect, to connect with you, to connect with your loved ones, to connect with anybody who's willing to let me uh, help them see their potential, to feel the way that I have felt not only about self, but my progress and where my potential future is going and believing in it, believing in it, not discarding it at all. And recognizing that if I don't have that skill set, that doesn't mean that I'm not capable of finding the skill set. I have not failed anything where I used to be so, so run by the fear of failure that I wouldn't do anything. Remember, friends, we're never failing. We're finding one way not to do life for us. It might have worked for that person and that person and maybe a whole host of people, maybe a whole generation of people it worked for. But if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean that something's wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you're broken. It just means you need to find a way that works for you. So I, I fully believe that. And we need to continue to embrace our individuality because those are our strengths. All right. Not everybody's going to want to coach. Not everybody's going to want to be a doctor. Not everybody's going to want to pick up waste management as their job. But all of us have the passion, potential, and um, where I would say inspiration to want to, to want to. And when we can really step into and focus to the, our skill set and our passions and our purpose, that's when our growth and contribution really matters. And it affects the world in a way that <sighs> you never dreamed possible, I suspect. So that entire word vomit session, it's a little bit of awareness and, um, steps in personal development and understanding why we took a year off from the podcast and why we're here today. A lot of really great things. I really hope that in the course of this hour, uh, not only did you get excited about the upcoming podcast season three to really tune into, uh, but some stuff for you, not only grace, I think that's one of the largest tools we really need to have when we are enacting change in our life, but the awareness that it's not picture perfect. It is, it's supposed to in, include hard days. Those are necessary for us. But you're just a human. You're just a human doing the best you can with what you got every single month can day. And please acknowledge that. Please acknowledge that. So as we get ready to wrap up this podcast, I am also very excited to tell you, I wish I would have said this at the beginning of the podcast, but we're doing a little bit different this year. So shout out to Olivia. Olivia is a client of mine. She's a client. She's actually a long-term friend first, then she became a client of mine. And now she's actually a podcast, podcast guest as well. She actually was the one that really pushed me over the edge to inspire me to get back into doing the podcast this year because for some silly reason, Rachel had a notion in her head that I needed to do one every single week. And I felt like that was a lot, uh, a lot of time for me to commit to. And I wasn't ready. And she's like, who said you had to do that? Maybe you could just start them off by doing them bi-weekly or even monthly. I'm like, girl, she's so smart. I don't know why it never came to me. 37 years old. But one of my clients had to teach me something about myself in business because I was open to it. I wasn't embarrassed by the fact that she's not a coach and she doesn't run her own business. And she gave me that information. I was absolutely relieved. So massive shout out to my friend, my dear loved loved one, Miss Olivia, uh, for giving me the inspiration that the, the podcast, be Me By Myself, it is going to be bi-weekly, uh, once a month actually for just one with myself. But then uh, there will be a second podcast that comes out in the second half of the month that will be guest I said that wrong, but there's going to be a guest on the, <laughs> there's going to be a guest on the podcast. Most of these will be familiar faces that you have seen on the podcast before. And some of them are going to be brand new, uh, people in, in general, we have men and women and anything in between and all of the things, I guess the entire spectrum to really share their experiences, not only about life, but definitely within coaching and personal development so that I can inspire you or answer some questions that you might have about it as well. And I'm very much looking forward to those podcasts. So make sure that if you haven't subscribed on YouTube, if you haven't subscribed on Pod uh, Spotify, or you haven't found uh, my link tree to make sure that you stay connected that you're doing that because I absolutely cater my business to the culture and community. 
I'm not Tony Robbins. I have accepted that. I don't want to be Tony Robbins. I want to be Rachel Vote right here in my community, touching lives, connecting with people, allowing you to tell your story to connect and touch with other lives as well. It's a little bit of a word vomit here, but I think you get what I'm saying. So uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up, but make sure uh, to let me know if you got some value from this. That really means a lot to me. And stay tuned, of course, for the next podcast release. And if you can't wait until then, again, link tree to find ways for us to connect for sure. I still love it when you get into my DMs and let me know what's going on in your life. So Thank you for listening. Thank you for your hearts being open and best of luck to you in your continued journey of progress. So I, I very much appreciate you. You know that, but I am grateful for you each and every single day. Stay happy, stay healthy, and of course, wash your hands. Bye-bye.